Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'd. Itikaf. Itikaf is from the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and this is when a person secludes themselves in the masjid. And we'll talk about some of the reasons for itikaf but first we have to know in accordance with the four madhahib that it is sunnah and that it is sunnah and mashru' for men and women so the women can also seclude themselves in the masjid bi'idnillah ta'ala so this is the sunnah of the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam and the four madhahib are all in agreement that it is a sunnah for the men and the women. And some of the evidence that it is sunnah and that it is permissible for the men and the women. An Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha and an Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallama اعتقف مع بعد نسائه وهي مستحاضة ترال دم that the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made itikaf you know he secluded himself in the masjid and with him was some of his wives and she I believe referring to Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha was mustahada at this time. She, meaning she had, uh, she was bleeding but it was not her menstrual period. Instead it, it's considered a type of sickness. That any blood which is not from your, from a woman's menstruation or her post, uh, post, you know, after birth bleeding, postnatal bleeding, then it is considered a type of sickness and this blood has a different ruling as we explained in our menstruation series that it is different than Haith when the fast it is different ruling meaning that a woman can enter the masjid with that kind of blood as long as she can guarantee she will not get it get the masjid dirty and she can pray and she can even have relations with her husband when she has that blood because it is not like menstruation blood which is the najasa and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best so in this hadith, the Prophet ﷺ made itikaf, and some of his wives made itikaf, and even Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha was having istihada. So even making itikaf while she was mustahada. So letting us know, and, and I believe she had a container to contain the blood in case uh, blood spilt then there was a way to catch it, to keep it from making the masjid uh, filthy. And so it lets us know that in our time, we have other ways and means which are even easier for us that the women can use uh, tampons and things like this, or uh, whatever, you, whatever you call them, those various toiletries that the women can use in order to prevent from making the masjid filthy. So this shows us that men and women can make itikaf and that even when a woman is istihada, when she has that blood other than those two that we mentioned, then she can make itikaf. And this is from the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So do not prevent your women from doing so if they wish to do that, as long as there's not going to be fitna for them. And Itikaf is when a person stays in the masjid with the intention, very important, as we always know, our ibadah, because itikaf is a form of ibadah. The Prophet ﷺ said, Verily, actions are tied to the intentions. So letting us know that all worship requires that we have intention to come closer to Allah, to please Allah, to worship Allah alone. So itikaf is no different. We have to use itikaf with the intention 
to come closer to Allah, to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you want the reward of itikaf. So it is making the intention to come closer to Allah by staying in the masjid uh, an evening or a night. And even the ulama, they differ. Some of the ulama say that even if one person can can make it itikaf for any amount of time, if they, they have the niyyah to stay in the masjid for one hour if they want, or between Salat al-Asr and Salat al-Maghrib or something, that that is considered itikaf and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. What is the purpose of itikaf? Itikaf is to make the heart conditioned to the obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's one of the, the purposes of itikaf, to, to, to increase that taqwa. As we mentioned, taqwa Allah is doing what Allah commands you, avoiding what He prohibited you. Another ghaya or purpose of itikaf is that it is to collect your heart and to control your desires and yourself, to contain and 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 and, and, and to to be in control and to to have your your to have to to maintain self control. Another benefit or another aspect of itikaf and a purpose is khalwabi, is that itikaf is a time for you to separate. So don't have itikaf and you're texting. Itikaf, you're t- t- rapping to your friends. Itikaf, you're doing all kinds of other activities. Use the itikaf for ibadah, for you and your Lord. You to come closer to your Lord, asking Him, seeking His forgiveness, seeking His favor, uh, trying to get taqwa Allah So use it to make khalwa. Get your, divorce yourself as much as possible from the dunya. Get yourself away from the dunya. Except for that which is necessary. Those absolute necessities. Another purpose of itikaf is to cut oneself off from busying themselves with the creation And freeing the heart from its attachment to this worldly life, to the dunya. And busying, striving to benefit the heart and yourself with tawheed. With actualizing, realizing, worshipping Allah alone. Tabarak wa ta'ala. By making dhikr. By loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is a type of ibadah. By accepting and having one's heart open to the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded you in His decree and all of those things. Opening your heart to that. And those are some of the benefits or some of the things in which the purposes for itikaf and what itikaf how we should achieve itikaf and what we should be striving to achieve you know separating ourselves from the dunya separating from ourselves just taking some time out just for Allah to remember Allah to worship Allah to pray to Allah to supplicate to Allah to think and reflect about Allah to barak wa ta'ala to read the Quran to do those things, to reflect on death, to reflect on the deeds that you've done. What have you done? What have you put forth for your akhirah? Itikaf is a time to reflect on that and strive to put forth something good and clean the heart, remove that dunya. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with al nafi ruskin tayyib wa amil al and may Allah wa ta'ala bless us to do itikaf and follow the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and come closer to Allah tabarak wa ta'ala wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam